and now I must face public disgrace. Drink water from your own well. Share your love only with your wife. Why spill the water of your springs into the streets, having sex with just anyone? You should never reserve it for yourselves, never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Now here's the thing. When you've been, had multiple relationships at one point, and then you try to get married and have one, it's a struggle. Because you've always been, you know what I'm trying to say, right? It's a struggle now to stay with one. Because we wander. Now look what it says. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving dear, a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? Well, that stuff's in the Bible? Absolutely. Well, that's it. well you know what? That's, well, we need to hear it. It's in there. Because God created it. For the Lord sees clearly what a man does. Wow. When I read that, right? The Lord sees clearly what a man does. I can't see clearly what you do, but God can see clearly what each and every one of us do. Look. Examining every path he takes. Every path I go down, God's watching me. That's why fear of the Lord is the foundation of, of true wisdom. Understanding that wherever I'm going, I'm taking God with me. Don't think you can hide from God. You can't. He's with you 24-7. The Holy Spirit lives inside you. Amen. You might be able to fool me, which is very hard. I, I already know. I already know when people don't come or they, they put something in front of this. You know what it hard is. This is not just the way it is. You can't change that. God will do it. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. He will die for lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his great foolishness. Wow. So the Bible, listen, the Proverbs, the Proverbs is so knowledgeable, for, especially for us, to read. There's this 31 of them. Just read one a day, and it'll put you on the right path of your thinking. Look at first, uh, chapter 6 now. Lessons for daily life. My child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt, or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement, and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride, <coughs> go and beg to have your name erased. And don't put it off till now. That's like, uh, how can I put that into something we can understand? That's like when you co-sign somebody's loan. Okay, you become a co-signer, and they don't pay it. Guess who they come after? Yep. You. They come after you. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you save your, until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter like a bird fleeing from a net. People get burnt all the time. You have to be wise. Amen. I know if I was going to go sign for somebody, I'd want to know what kind of lifestyle they lived and if they were going to be able to pay it. If they were stable and steady with their job and made the payments on time. Right? going to be why. That's, this is what the sermon's all about. You can't just give it to anybody. That'd be, you'd be a fool. That's why it's not saying it right here. You can't do that for anybody. Now look what it says. Like a bird fleeing from a net. Take lessons from the ants, you lazy bones. <laughs> Any lazy bones in here? Yep. Listen, if there is, now don't answer it. You just take this up with God. <laughs> Learn their ways and become wise. Can you realize that we can take lessons from an ant? 
You know why? I'm going to tell you why. And we're going to keep reading. Though they had no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer. That's like saying, going to work every day with nobody watching you. No supervision, but you just going and doing your job anyway, like you're going to work for Jesus. You know what people do when the boss is away? Oh, wait a minute, let me go check my emails. I'm telling you right now, you think that nobody's watching, right? Don't think that they're not. Everybody can see, guess who else is watching? <coughs> God. You can learn a lesson from the ant. The ant's got nobody supervising him. He goes out, gets his food, comes back. He goes out, gets his food, comes back. Needs no supervision. Neither should a mature Christian with integrity. Look what it says. This, this, is, this is so wise. How can I learn from an ant? Boy, they're, they're smart. The ants are very smart. And they can lift ten times their own weight. Now look what it says. That's true. <coughs> but you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber. Or you can put that into uh, procrastination. How long are you going to put it off? Look what it says. A little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. What are worthless and wicked people like? What are worthless and wicked people like? They're constant liars. Boy. <clears throat> Signaling their deceit with the wink of the eye, a nudge of the foot, or the wiggle of the finger. Boy, this cuts, cuts right through the chase. Pulls no punches, right? Mm. Constant liars. Mm. Their perverted hearts plot evil. What's a perverted heart? Twisted. It's twisted, what? It plots evil. It plots wrongdoing. Instead of plotting good things, it plots evil. Does believers do that? Yeah, good believers can do that. Can plot evil. Don't think because you're saved you can't plot evil. Because you have two things. You have good and you have evil. You have a sin nature still inside of you, and you can plot evil even in church. <laughs> And they constantly stir up trouble. I'm telling you, there's troublemakers everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's troublemakers in work. There's troublemakers at home. There's troublemakers in church. There's troublemakers everywhere. Because you know what? When somebody don't get their way, or they don't, they're mad about something, they will stir up trouble, even in church. Instead of understanding, leave it in God's hands. Mm -hmm. But the Bible, I love the Bible, because it tells me the human heart. No. But they will be destroyed suddenly, broken in an instant, beyond all hope of healing. You see it all the time. People come into church, people leave the church. Mm -hmm. People stir it up, people leave. God will take them out, God will bring them in. That's just the way it goes. The wheat and the weeds. Yep. They're in the church. But guess who's in control of that? Not um. me. God. God. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there are six things that the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, or that's what, pride. A lying tongue. Hands that kill the innocent. A heart that plots evil. Feet that race to do wrong. A false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in a family. Wow. A person who sows discord in a family, God hates it. Not only in the spiritual family, but even in your own biological family. Wow, God's not really talking about drunkenness and all these outward things. He's talking about sins of the heart that he really hates. Yeah. Lying backbiting, gossiping, slandering people. Guess what? All of us are guilty of all that. Well, I never touched a drug in all my life. So what? You can't stop talking about people. 
God's mad at you more than he's mad at the drug addict. Because it's the sins of the heart that he goes after. Mm -hmm. It's the outward things that show, you know, we judge other people with, but it's the sins of our heart. This is the stuff right here. Can't keep your mouth shut. That's a big one. You know, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say anything. Why do you talk bad about people? Why? If somebody, you don't like something somebody does, all you do is go assassinate their character and tell them how, everybody how bad they are, but forget about all the good they ever did for you. Evil. Don't tell me that's of God. That's of the devil. And don't say, well, I'm a good Bible student. I don't care if you come to Bible study six times a week and you still do that. Guess what? You've learned nothing. You don't know how to love anybody. You don't know how to accept anybody because God accepts you and loves you unconditionally. Even with all your sins and failures and foibles, he doesn't say, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> no, he already knew you were going to do it, and he forgave you, and he gave you grace and mercy. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> we're to be like, you know what we come here to become like, right? Jesus. We come here to become like he is. Not only to ourselves, but to other people. Yeah. If it's still all about you, it's called selfishness. And that's what it's all about from the Bible in the beginning. The devil was selfish. He wanted to be God. I want to run my own life. I want to call all the shots. Well, then why do you need Jesus if you want to call all the shots? It's all a bunch of what? Fake Christianity. Either Jesus is calling the shots or you are. Either one. Coming to Bible study doesn't change that fact. You can try to fool other people. I go to Bible study, so I'm a good person. Who's the Lord of your life? That's what really counts. Is there something you'll deny for Jesus and to make sure that you're available for Him and not just yourself? That'll show really what you're about. You can't get around fooling anybody with that. Now look what it says. My son, verse 20, obey your father's commands <coughs> and don't neglect your mother's instruction. Mm. Now, boy, mm. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I didn't obey my mother and I didn't listen to my father. And boy, I made a mess of my life because of it. They seen me going down the wrong road and told me all the time and I didn't want to hear it. How many of you don't want to hear it? Right now. And you're not listening to your father, your father in heaven right now? Mm -hmm. Well, the consequences will come. Believe me. You're, I don't, you can go. Don't, don't worry. Whatever you're doing, you will get, it will find you out and it will cause some kind of consequence in your life down the road. You, sin, you can only get away with sin for a season. Then the consequence will come. Remember, always reaping and sowing never changes. You always harvest more later than you sow and more than you sow. Why does God not jump on it right away? Because it gives you time to turn from it. And if you don't turn from it, he turns up the heat. And then you keep going and going and going, thinking you're getting away with something, and you're really getting away with nothing. You're only hurting yourself. I love it. It's nice and quiet in here. <laughs> well, maybe you're learning something, right? No, this is beautiful. No, look what it says. Keep their words always in your heart and tie them around your neck. You know, my father, God rest his soul, he used to say to me all the time, he used to point up, he used to say, he's your best friend, you know that, right? My father used to come here all the time. Aww. He's your best friend. True. And he is so right. And I said, how could he be my best friend? Because I didn't understand him back then. I thought he was judging me. Mm -hmm. Because I went to the church and religion. Oh, God's watching you and he's doing, he's not going to get away with that. I was like, I can't go near God. Forget it. I touch holy water. I'm going to catch it on fire. <laughs> I can't go near God. So I ran away from God. That's not a relationship. That was, I, always, they were, I was taught that God was a judge and he's watching over me. And if you're really bad, you're going to go to hell. 
That wasn't the God of the Bible. No. That was the God of religion. But my father always told me, your best friend is God in heaven. Jesus is your best friend. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, today, now that I know Jesus, mm -hmm. he's my best friend. Even when everybody yeah. else turns their back on me, yeah. or has something bad to say about me, or thinks negative of me, mm -hmm. he accepts me and loves me unconditionally. Hallelujah. And I preach his word, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm here to please God, not you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You should be here to please God and not you. If you really understand what he did for you. Now listen. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. All the instructions, all the wisdom. Now we get the wisdom of God. That's why we come to Bible study. So we can walk in his ways. When you sleep, they will protect you. Listen to this. Anybody have, when they go to sleep, have some, some bad dreams and evil stuff? Mm -hmm. The devil attacks our dreams and everything. He's pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. But it tells you right here, listen. Look at, I'm going to back up to verse 21. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. We're talking about God's word. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. See, here's the thing. God's word becomes part of your thought process. When you wake up in the morning, you know what's on already. The thought process is up. Whether I feel like depressed or I feel like going to work or I don't like what they did to me and all these things come up. Understand that this will, listen, it tells you right here. When you wake up, they will advise you. No, don't listen to the wrong voices. Listen to my voice and my word. I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. This is just part of the process of changing you. It's not about how you feel. It's about the facts of my word. Those feelings are not real. You can, I can wake up one morning feeling great going to work and everything's well. And I can wake up the next morning nothing's different and feel down and depressed and nothing goes right. Mm -hmm. And nothing changed up outwardly. Up here, the devil tried to get up in this mind of mine. Because that's where the battlefield is. Yep. It's a battle for the thoughts. Now look what it says. For their command is a lamp, and their instruction a light. Their corrective discipline is a way to light. Do you realize that really you need correction and discipline? And people hate it. People hate to get corrected and disciplined. But the Bible says we need it. Amen. See it? Somebody, the Bible calls people fools who don't accept discipline and correction in their life. Cause you a fool. That's what it says. For their command is a lamp and their stress and a light, and their corrective discipline is the way to life. These words are life-giving words. These words are the path to life. All the other stuff that's going through your head is of leads to death. Only God's word leads to life. It will keep you from the immoral woman. Here it is again. From the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. Oh boy. I read this. I say, God. I'm going to have to walk around with a blindfold on. No, because listen. No, in all reality, you know just by a glance. If somebody's interested, they just give you that look. <laughs> And the guy's like putty. <laughs> the, Bible, the Bible tells it like it is, man, and that's true. Don't let her coy glances seduce you, for a prostitute will bring you to poverty. But sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. <sighs> Can a man, listen, I love this. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Why is, why is it, why will it cost you your life? I mean, the Bible tells it clearly, and it's so true. Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with the man who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. Excuses might be found for a thief who steals because he's starving, but if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole. Retribution even if he has to sell everything in his house. 
Now that's better than going to jail, to be honest with you. At least they have an opportunity to make okay, right yeah. the wrong. Yeah. Just going in prison don't change it. You still did it. You get out and do it again. Yeah. But when you have, when it costs you something, you're going to pay back seven times more? Or oh, you think twice about doing it again. The Bible's, the Bible's way better than any prison system. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. He will be wounded and disgraced, and his shame will never be erased. For the woman's jealous husband will be furious, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. You got that right. He will accept no compensation, nor be satisfied with a payoff of any kind. Of any size. What does that mean? That would cause, when you violate someone else's wife, you can't pay for that feeling that you did that to somebody. The guy wants to kill you. And he probably will. And it happens all the time. All right, let's go to chapter 7. We're moving right along here. I want to try to get through these because. Very educational, though, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, I should have read this a long time ago. We've been a lot better off. Just being honest. But I'll tell you what, having a virtuous wife now, I'm a blessed man. Boy, did God give me some mercy. So much virtue because, you know what, Jesus Christ is the center of our marriage. And I don't put unrealistic expectations on her, and she don't put any unrealistic expectations on me. And I know that she's there to help me change, and I'm there to help her change. And I thank her for it. Before I used to kick and squirm all the time, now I'm accepting it. Mm -hmm. And wow, when you accept it, it goes so much easier. Mm -hmm. When you understand the whole process, God uses her to change me. I can't change her. She's using, he's using her to change me. I need to change. Thank you, Jesus, for showing me that. It took about 40 years, but I got there. <laughs> Stubborn, right? Look at verse 7. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Obey my commands and live. Guard my instruction as you guard your own eyes. See that? Guard my instruction like you guard your own eyes. Tie them around your fingers as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Wow. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman, from the listening to the flattery of a promiscuous woman. While I was at the window of my house looking through the curtain, I saw some naive young men, and one in particular who lacked common sense. He was crossing the street near the house of an immoral woman, strolling down the path by her house. It was at twilight in the evening as deep darkness fell. The woman approached him, seductively dressed.